Good morning, gang. Happy Saturday morning. It's supposed to be a beautiful weekend here for me. Sunny and no rain until Monday. So it means I can actually get a ton of stuff done outside if I'm lucky and don't wear myself out uh, before the rain comes, which the rain will be pleasantly welcomed here to keep me from having to go out and water gardens and trees and everything like that all day. So... I wanted to talk about something today. Uh, if some of y'all know who Keith Brooks is, uh, he has a channel. He's a family member here, uh, active here with us. I see his name pop up pretty much every day in comments. Keith did a really interesting vi video, I think it was on Thursday, uh, called The Wheat and the Chaff. And it got me thinking a little bit. Now... You know, many times in the comments or in the live streams or whatever, you know, I'll hear from y'all saying, you know, I prep and my spouse doesn't or my kids think I'm crazy or, you know, whatever would be, you know, and everybody feels like they're kind of in this on their own, you know, and the answer from everybody, including me, is always, don't worry, one day they're going to all thank you for doing what you did. But it brought me to kind of thinking a little bit about... <clears throat> not my own, not just my own prepping life, but my own life per se. Okay. And I titled this video uh, basically the best day of my life for a reason. Okay. And, you know, if everybody looks back on their life, they could say the best day of their life is when they graduated school or when they got married or when their kids were born or something like that. And yeah, those are all extremely significant milestones in one's life and in mine as well. Okay. But they're not the best day of my life. Okay. And the key word in there is life. In my opinion, in my life, the best day of my life was the day I woke up and said, screw what everybody else thinks. I'm done trying to prove myself to anybody. And I say this, and, and this wasn't that long ago. This was maybe 2014, I think it was. So figure at that point I was 48 years old. And... I'd gone through my life, 48 years at that point, of trying to prove my worth to other people, okay? To my parents, to my brother, to my bosses, to anybody, okay? And any decision that I made, I always needed verification from somebody else that it was a good decision. And if I didn't get that verification, a lot of times I didn't do it. And that kind of took a little bit out of me because I'm 48 years old, you know, up 40 for 48 years, you know, all right, I'm a middle-aged man at this, you know, before all this point. And it's like, I, I realized one day, it's like, why the hell do I give a damn about getting somebody else's approval? Okay. Now, if I would have listened to my family, I probably, well, I guarantee I would have never met Mrs. P, okay? Uh, it got to the point where even when I went to go see her, I didn't tell anybody I was going to Russia, okay? How do you not tell your family you are going to Russia, okay? But I didn't, okay? I called them when I came back. I was waiting on a nine-hour layover at JFK and called and said, hi, just got back from vacation. Oh, where'd you go? We were trying to get a hold of you. Where'd you go? Oh, I've been in Russia for the last week. Huh? Okay. And then I told him the whole story and I got all the, oh, you need to be careful and all this sort of crap. Okay. You know, but again, I'm 47 years old, 48 years old, 40, I think I was around 47 at this point. You know, I would have never moved Move to Vegas. Oh my God, you can't move to Vegas. Why would you have done something like that? You know, I, I look back on so many of these things and the lies that were told to me throughout my life, okay, by family, by friends, by bosses, by whatever, who were just using me. I mean, 
you all know what I do for a living, okay? I've been a corporate recruiter for 18 years. And for some time I worked in the agency setting and now I specifically work for the companies. You know, greatest lie that they'll tell you in my industry is, oh, but you can make commissions and everything. So they pay you a pittance and a salary. And then of course, you know, you can make these commissions. So you bust your ass and bust your ass and they make 96% of the money and you get four. Uh, yeah, those are the actual figures. You know, so I, I find somebody a job and, you know, literally I might get paid 400 bucks to do it. Okay. And, you know, if you think finding somebody to do an IT job or something like that is easy, uh, it's not. Okay. But that's, you know, and I, I finally got to the point in my life where I'm like, the hell with doing this for everybody else. I'm going to start doing things for me. And it was amazing how my life turned. Okay. And some of you guys know the story of my life. I mean, I was homeless back 10 years ago after a divorce, dug my way out of that, everything, and got to where I am now. I mean, and all through nothing but hard work. Yeah, I had a little bit of help to get on my feet again uh, with the VA, uh, helping me get into a tiny little apartment at one point. And, but then, I mean, everything I had after that was secondhand store furniture and dishes and whatever it was. It was a way to get started. So I had something that I could, you know, start my life over with again and, you know, build up to where I was. And so that was kind of going on. But so my point is in, in going into being prepping, all right, the hell with what everybody else thinks, you know, do what is right for you. Okay. Because when the balloon goes up, I guarantee you there's nobody coming to your rescue. Not your neighbors, not your family, not your government, not nobody. Okay, And the last thing you want to have happen is the, oh my God, if I only would have moment. Okay, We've tried okay, for the entire community, prepping community, not just us. Okay, But I mean, you know, Pick anybody on YouTube, off YouTube, whatever it would be. We've tried for decades to get people to wake up. You know, tell them something's coming. Do some prepping, put some food back, you know, prepare this, get, get more self-sufficient, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And there's some people that you just can't get through to. And what I'm saying is... If the last 15 months has not woken up the masses, they are never going to wake up. Stop wasting your energy on trying to wake them up. I don't care if it's your spouse. I don't care if it's your kids. I don't care if it's your neighbor, your best friend, your parents, whoever it would be. You've done what you can by now. If they won't open their eyes, get their head out of the sand, and go, hmm, you know what? Maybe Mary was right. You know, this is looking a little weird that there's shortages at the store and the price of everything's going up and there's saber rattling all around the country and around the world. And, you know, the government is clearly out for themselves and not for us. If they haven't noticed that now, the blinders they have on are so thick, you're never going to get through. Stop wasting your time and your energy talking to them. It's, you're not going to change it at this point. Focus that energy on doing what you know is right for you. Stop worrying about everybody else's acceptance. Who cares if they call you a tinfoil hat wearing wacko? Okay. Because what's going to happen is there is going to be a day, probably pretty soon, when everything does go crazy and they are going to knock on your door and go, Mary, can you help me? And your answer should be something simple like, I did. About two years ago, I tried to tell you this was coming for years and years and years. And you didn't want to listen. I'm sorry. I don't have, didn't have the time. I didn't have the finances to make, care, to make sure you were taken care of. I had to worry about making sure I was taken care of. I did what I could. I informed you. You chose not to listen. 
So now there are consequences to your actions and now you are going to have to, you know, reap the rewards of what you did not do. And I know it's hard. I know, especially when it comes to family, but if your family does not want to listen, if they don't want to care, if they want to ridicule you and give you all, you know, nine kinds of hell for doing what you're doing, screw them. Okay. I know that's hard. Okay. Uh, I mean, we've seen this throughout politics in the last easily six months, but I mean, much longer than that, where best friends have no longer, no longer speak with each other because, you know, one was red, one was blue. We've seen divorces happen. We've seen uh, families torn apart because one was red and one was blue. It is not your responsibility to take care of everyone else as much as you want to, because most of us have big hearts and good hearts. Okay. It's not your responsibility. And the sooner you, you realize that the only one that cares about you is you, is, the sooner you are going to be able to work in life, you know, move further, move forward and everything. Because everybody who is telling you not to do something or you need to do something different than what you're doing, they're not, that isn't in your best interest. They're thinking about what's in their best interest. And again, it's a control thing. If they tell you not to do something, that maintains their control. And the biggest thing that you can do to a bully, okay, is take the control away from them. And once they have the, don't have that anymore, they just go cower in a corner. And that's exactly the same thing that's going to be happening with the people who are not prepped for anything. The shit's going to happen, and they're going to go cower in a corner because they have no power anymore. You know, once you tell, you know, the people that don't want to listen that you don't care anymore... That's when they'll start to care because the longer you tell them, you need to do this, you need to do this, you need to do this, their answer is, no, I don't. I'm just going to let you do it all. And then when it happens, I'm just going to come to you. And when you finally just tell them, you know, screw it. I don't care what you do anymore. You're not my responsibility. Do what you want. That's when they've lost control and they're going to go, holy crap, if he's not going to do any of this stuff for me, what am I going to do? And that's kind of the point to the whole thing. You know, tough love sometimes is very hard, but very important. But the biggest thing is, you know, you got to look out for number one because nobody else is going to. And when you finally make the realization that you don't give a shit when anybody else thinks you're going to do what you think is right because you're the only one that has to live with the consequences of it, your life will get much better, much quicker. And I can say that because I'm living proof. Have a good Saturday, guys. Pinball out.